whatever. Hey everybody, how you doing? You know who I am, you know what we're doing, you know the deal, let's get started. We're listening to Verge, Sex and Violence. This is an amazing Finnish black metal album. By the way, it was like a little dick on there. <laughs> uh, I can't recommend this enough, man. I just keep coming back to this album. I've had it for a couple of years. Uh, it's it's really nothing all that out of the ordinary. It's just fucking great. The songwriting is amazing. Um, it's not all that uh, typical of other types of Finnish black metal bands. Uh, I just I really love this album. Um, they're one of my favorite and highly recommended Finnish black metal bands. Uh, so uh, it's October first. We're heading into Doom fucking Tober. Uh, so I'm looking forward to the fall season. I might not be doing as many videos as usual because I'll be out into the woods, enjoying nature, enjoying being able to breathe outside and uh, look at the change of seasons until uh, winter comes. So a week ago, <clears throat> you might have noticed that there was a video popped up since my last update that was Panopticon, live in Minneapolis. And I had the pleasure of joining Panopticon on stage uh, with Tanner from Obsequii. You may or may not know, I did a couple of lines on that Panopticon album, uh, vocal lines on that Panopticon album, so I was invited to do it live. It went fucking great. I was super nervous about it, but once I got up there, I was just like, man, if you, if, you got, if you fuck this up, there's nothing you can do about it. You're up here, just do it. And I felt like I did it better than I thought I would, but whatever. <laughs> What's more important is that Panopticon fucking was amazing live. Um, they're one of my favorite bands. Austin is one of my best friends. And I, I don't know, it's just... I didn't think it would go any other way, but when you see it happen in front of you, when you see a band just fucking completely level a place, it's just mind-blowing. It, it doesn't happen all that often anymore. Uh, I guess I can't even think of a time where I would compare the intensity and the uh, just the amount of pure fucking music pleasure coming out of that fucking stage to compare it to, but uh, it was amazing. I haven't been to a show in a long time where like nobody was on their phone. Everybody was just fucking glued to that stage. It was, it was fucking amazing. Obsequii, mind-blowing again. I've had the chance to see them three times live now. Uh, I got to have pizza after the show with Obsequii and Nichochwin. Uh, I also picked this LP up there. Uh, this is a fucking killer album that Bindrun put out this year. Um, it just came out on LP, so I was happy to pick it up. The guys from Bindru or Nichochwin were there. Uh, this is just a black vinyl, so I'm not going to show it, just like Protocol. Um, it comes with a fucking killer poster of the album cover. Um, look at that thing. I just wish I had the wall space to put it up. I might uh, someday. Um, comes with the lyric sheet, a lot of explanation of what the album's about, um, which is not a typical theme for black metal. So I highly recommend you check this album out. Um, and oh, fuck this. Okay. I also got in a bunch of CDs, of course, because I'm a fucking idiot who can't get off of Discogs without spending money. Anyway, this is Portal's Vexo Void on uh, Profound Lore. I really love this band. I've been wanting to pick this up for quite a while. Uh, finally found one for a decent price. It was like eight bucks. Killer experimental Australian, like noise death metal almost. Uh, the lyrics are, or the riffs are like really atonal and weird. Uh, artwork is killer. You probably know this band. You might love them or hate them, but uh, I fucking love this album. I can't wait to hear what they do next. And I feel like this album is the pinnacle of what they do. Uh, and then two CDs in my last video. Ron joined me for talking about our most meaningful records, and he brought down two CDs for me to check out. Thankfully, I already checked them out, and I already liked them, and I had been wanting them. This is a band called Oath, uh, and it's a Finnish band. The album is called Mustan and whatever. Uh, this is on Immortal Frost Productions, but it's just high quality Finnish black metal. Uh, this is a band from Russia called Merknet, and the album is called Nigra Diakonia or something like that because I speak Russian real well, of course. Anyway, this band reminds me quite a bit of Elysian Blaze. Uh, pretty good stuff, so I'm happy to have a good friend give those to me. Um, this is Nehema. This is Light of a Dead Star uh, on Oak and Shield. This is an original. It's kind of in rough shape. That's why I got it for cheap on Discogs. 
Uh, but this is a fucking amazing record. Always been wanting to pick this up. I've been kind of getting into like late 90s, early 2000s black metal albums that I kind of uh, overlooked. And this is a fine example of that. I, I got Ny uh, Naglefar's Virus West album a couple of months ago in seeking like a further exploration of the origins of Ruins of Beverast. Uh, and so this is the pre-Ruins of Everest band, Nagelfar, uh, and then this is their first album, Hunagrab im Herzt. Uh, and this is an original, as far as I can tell. Uh, it's on the Kittenhund Records, and I picked this up from some Russian seller on Discogs. I can't remember which was which. This is their second album, but one was $10 and one was five, well, actually euros, I want to say. So between the two of them, I think these two CDs wound up costing me like 20 bucks shipped. I was really happy to have a, a deal on those and to have those originals in my collection, surprisingly. And uh, so far, I've spun them both once, and they're really great albums. I'm looking forward to listening to them some more. Got to remember to quit beating on this table. Uh, so, yeah, I think we're ready to get into the CDs alphabetically. Um, so this is a band called Bound by Entrails. Actually, I'll start chronologically if I can. This is a band called Bound by Entrails, and they're friends of mine. They got their start in Iowa City, Iowa, and this is an EP uh, where I'm from, and this is an EP they released when they were here. It's, uh, boy, I haven't listened to this in forever. You know, I probably saw them live more than I listened to this album, so it's kind of funny when you see a band live so often, you don't really uh, think to listen to their record all that much, but this is their second album then. Uh, this is For Vahal Sorrow. So this is kind of more in the uh, pagan direction of things. Um, and this is a really great album from what I remember. This is a like a pro printed CDR, I think. Um, and it really shows some maturity to it. Um, and then the band, so then the band kind of split in a way. The two guys uh, here are in a band that fucking rules called uh, Venom Ascension. Uh, and they stayed here in Iowa City, and this guy, Brett, who was a good friend of mine, moved to Alaska. And so he moved to Alaska, and then I, through another friend, hooked him up with a really great black metal drummer, Tyler. And therefore, he was able to continue doing Bound by Entrails. And I feel like they just fucking really picked up steam once they got up there. They released this album. Um, this is The Oath, The Burden. Um, this is a digipack, and I... This is the first pro CD version um, that they put out. Um, this is where they kind of started to sound like Emperor, and there's actually two Emperor covers on here. Or no, one. Inua Satana, the Emperor cover, and then a live track on here as a bonus. Um, so this is really killer. It's on Runefire Records, which is the label of Brett, the guy, the main guy in the band. Um, so after that, they released this one. And this is kind of more in the Opeth direction. Um, and with this one, the songwriting maturity is fucking really amazing. I never thought these guys would turn out to be so damn good at what they're doing. Um, this is just a digipack. But uh, this album is really great. The production kind of bothers me. It's really strange. Um, I, w I really wish like this album had the production of this album. Uh, but either way, they're both really highly enjoyable, great records. Uh, and I think they called it a day after this album, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's Bound by Entrails, quick <laughs> through the discography. Next, I've got uh, Brain Drill. This is a band I was kind of nuts about for a minute. Um, and then they just, I think they broke up, or I don't know. They had a feud when they were on their first tour, and then a bunch of guys left or whatever, and they're still together, but they have different members, whatever, I don't know. I, it's not really my kind of thing, but for the, for the time, um, it was really an amazing thing to listen to. And I really love CDs like this. You ever see anything like this? It's like a three inch CD printed on a full size thing with that print on the outside. It's really cool. So this is their EP called uh, The Parasites. I don't really know what to compare this to if you haven't heard Brain Drill. I guess it's just like super brutal, hyper speed death metal. Um, ordinarily, I want to say this kind of music usually has like a lot of slam elements and the slam is like the last fucking thing I give a shit about. Um, so I was, I guess I was kind of into this for it being so remarkably intense without having any of the like shitty hardcore tough guy elements that usually turn me off of a band. Um, so this is apocalyptic feasting. Uh, for me, this is where it's at. I don't 
know if I've listened to that demo in the last five years, but I put this on every once in a while. It's just ridiculously, stupidly fast and heavy and shreddy and wanky. It's just a lot of fun when you really want to annoy somebody or you're really pissed off and you don't know what to put on. Brain Drill is pretty fucking cool, man. Uh, next, this is a band called Brave. Um, I was into this band for a minute back in the late 90s. Sort of like gothic metal, I guess. Uh, they got a beautiful woman singer. Uh, I love her vocals. Um, I guess I would say maybe it's kind of like Morgion or something. Um, but I don't know. I, I really don't listen to this very often. But I remember really liking it at the time. Um, yeah, I want to say they were from like Virginia or something like that. Anyway, that's Brave. This album is called Searching for the Sun. Uh, next, taking it back to Iowa City once again. This is a band called Breakdance. Uh, this is a local band. Uh, they're not together anymore. I think they've moved out of town since then. But this is kind of like a punky grindcore kind of thing. Uh, and there aren't a lot of metal bands out of Iowa City. So anytime there's been anything remotely metal coming out of uh, this area. I'm always at their shows, usually making friends with them or I already know them or something. Um, and so this is their full length album, self titled, I want to say. Um, but they used to play some great fucking shows. They were super fun to watch. The album's called Mistaken Grave. And I think this is self released and it's about 12 years old now. Uh, by the way, everything I mentioned will be in the description below. Um, and by the way, I've been putting uh, Bandcamp links instead of YouTube links below, just in case there's something that you might want to check out, you're one step closer to buying it and supporting the artists that I'm trying to kind of promote as I do these videos. So I just want to kind of mention that. That's why I've been doing that. Um, so next I've got Brian Jones. This is like an emo rock band also from uh, my area here. Good friends of mine. This album probably came out 12 or 15 years ago or so. Uh, it's pretty good. It's nothing I really put on all that often. But the friends um, in that band, I've played shows with them uh, many, many years ago. And I'm just still happy to be friends with those guys. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> this is a freebie that this fucking douchebag friend of mine sent me. Can you believe this fucking album cover? You know, I don't even think I've ever even played this thing. Carving a Crimson Career by Brimstone? I don't, what the hell is this? This is a promo on Nuclear Blast. How do bands like this get signed to Nuclear Fucking Blast and great underground bands are just sitting by the wayside getting ignored? Fucking ridiculous. I'm gonna listen to this today and it's probably a piece of shit. I'm gonna try and give it a fair chance even though that cover is a complete and utter waste of fucking time. <laughs> Anyways, so uh, back to good stuff. Uh, this is, I, I'm going to try and pronounce this funny enough, it's not in real word, but I always say Brobdenangian. Um, this is like a noise black metal band, just total fucking scathing madness. Um, I really like this album actually, I think we picked it up in a trade or something a couple of years ago. Um, and this, I can't remember if this is self-titled or not. Um, I'll definitely, yeah, Torture Stained Disaster is the... Uh, album title. I don't know who put this out. This might I know this was related to Rusty Axe Records in some way, um, but I'll definitely put a proper link to this if I can find it down below in the video, but I do, I do recommend this if you're into something that's just like noisy, nasty, scathing, and just uh, almost like irritating black metal with a lot of super intense noise elements to it. Uh, next, I don't remember which order these come in, but here's Broken Hope. Swamped in gore and the bowels of repugnance. Um, I can't really differentiate between the two of these. It's not like I listen to this band very often. Um, death metal is definitely not my preferred genre. I've just kind of, you know, if I see a classic or something in a used bin, yeah, I'll pick it up. I got the room. Um, so this is Swamped in gore. I hung out with these guys at Milwaukee Metal Fest a couple many, many years ago. Um, but this is like Chicago death metal, I want to say. Yeah. That's Swamped in Gore. It's just like, I don't know, knock off Cannibal Corpse or something. Uh, this is... <laughs> look at that artwork. I fucking love that. 
I just love having old school stuff like this around um, in case I ever want to listen to it. Anyway, whatever. Yeah, it's just like kind of second rate. Cannibal Corpse is really the best thing I can compare it to offhand without having like, you know, the faculties of being a huge death metal fan like some guys are. I'm just not all that crazy about it. <laughs> so that kind of brings us to Brujeria. This is their album Matando Gueros. Uh, found this in a used bin, picked it up. I just thought it was like an essential I had to have. Um, some really disgusting pictures on this thing. Um, they did put out an album that I did like a couple of years ago. I can't remember what it's called. But it's just like Mexican death metal. Um, yeah, so this next band, I fucking love this band. This is uh, Brolvana 2. And this is a Canadian solo project by, uh, I think he plays bass in, uh, I'm not even going to go there, whatever. It's a Canadian solo project, just mind-bendingly insane, I guess, sort of blackened death metal in a way. Um, it's really hard to describe. It's really super unique and super atmospheric. Um, and these three albums that I have here are really good, and I'll go through them more um, specifically. This is Uterine Acid Swishes. This is Last Living Dream, maybe my favorite. Um, and then this is Menstrual Extraction Ceremony. Um, and this was released on Pig and Flames. This, I actually united this band with Ron and I, the label. Um, anyways, this... Um, is the one I listen to the least, but I swear every time I put this on, I'm like, why the fuck don't I listen to this one more often? Um, it's got three songs on it. They're really long, 1746, 1722, and 20 minutes or so. Um, but I got these copies off of the band. There he is, holding the flat uh, Bobcat. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't really know what I would compare this to. It's super unique, and seriously, just... I don't think I've ever heard an album um, such as this one that just really gives you the, the feeling of terror, just absolute like mental, mentally ill insanity is so well contained and portrayed in this album and in this album. Um, I really love the production on it, the, the guitars. It sounds like you're, and it probably are, recorded in just like a hollow room where the drums are just reverberating and just echoing so much throughout your head. Um, and it has some really interesting instrumentation. Um, it goes well between being like really fast and intense and slowing down and being like slow, doomy, and kind of dirgy. Um, it's just, I've, it's really honest music from what I can tell. At least it seems like it is to me. Um, so this is an album, uh, Menstrual Extraction Ceremony. We put this out on Pagan Flames. You can still get copies of this for damn certain on PaganFlames.com. I really love that artwork on there. Um, and this album includes a lot of his paintings, and I think this kind of helps paint a picture of this world that uh, Kid String is trying to protect, portray through these records. Um, I really enjoyed putting this out and he's gone on to do I want to say two more albums since the release of this one that are also pretty good but I don't like them as near as much as I do uh, Menstrual Extraction Ceremony and Last Living Dream you should be able to still pick up copies of this and maybe even this um, either from the band directly or from distros I wouldn't be surprised. People don't seem to be uh, hip to this band as much as they deserve to be. I fucking love Brolvana too, really. Um, so yeah, uh, I think my next video is gonna be something a little different. Since it's October, I love celebrating the fall uh, or autumn season. So I think I wanna do something kinda celebrating that. Uh, let me know what you like listening to in the fall. In this video and then in the next one maybe you can shoot me some of your top like doomtober albums or something like that so look for that in a couple of days uh thanks for joining me thanks for subscribing